Here you will see the JBoss Operations login screen. This allows you to go in and log in to your operational management environment, giving you a view of all of your servers, regardless of whether they are running on bare metal or in a private cloud or even in a public cloud. As the dashboard loads, you will see that we have a summary count of all of the servers and resources that we have running. Those summary accounts list all the servers, services, and groups that we have defined. In addition to that, you can also select one of these items, for example, servers, to see the number of servers you have available. Once the server listing is displayed, you can order them by availability to show all running servers. Here you can see the different types of server resources that are available. We have cache subsystems, web servers, application servers, even the uh, JBoss Operations Network agent and servers are also available. So here you'll see we have several different application servers running on different uh, ports in different platforms. So I'm going to go ahead and select EAP so we can see an example of the JBoss application server environment. Now that we are looking at EAP, you can also notice, again, in this cloud environment that we have multiple different servers that we have the ability to communicate to. So in this case, uh, we are selecting EAP2, and EAP2 happens to be running on a Windows instance. Now the John agent is sitting on that Windows instance, and again, it doesn't matter whether that instance is virtual or bare metal, allowing you to gain resource information about those services running on that server. It'll give you some statistics, some recent measurements that have been taken, and then you also have uh, the ability to see the other information available for that server to include the monitoring information. The monitoring information will give you availability management to see when your server is up or down, also any statistics that are available for the different metrics that you are gathering on each system resource. You can also check what system resources have been inventoried into the John server environment by selecting the Inventory tab. On the Inventory tab, you'll be able to see all the web applications, data sources, message queues, um, enterprise applications that have been deployed to this environment. You can also see, in this uh, example, how you might be able to deploy a new resource. So this is where you would be able to deploy a new data source, a new enterprise application, a new EJB application or a new web application. Finally, oftentimes you'll want to be able to control your operational environment. So from, this envi from the J JBoss Operations Network, you can get in and be able to control each server. So operations that are available would include start, restart, and shutdown. Now really quickly, in addition to that, you'll also want to be aware of the alerting capability. This is one of the most important differentiators for the JBoss Operations Network, especially in um, situations where you're managing lots of middleware. What this allows you to do is go in and create alerts so that when a situation presents itself in your operational environment, you can get notified via email or via an SNMP trap to let you know that certain information has changed. For example, in this case, a JVM memory alert. If our JVM runs or uh, experiences a fluctuation in memory, we want to be aware of it. In this case, if it goes 50% below the baseline value that has been calculated by the operations network, we certainly want to know. So it will send an email notification to all notifiers in the list. So finally, we, going back to the dashboard, you'll be able to see that the dashboard will provide you, again, a list of resources here. You'll also be able to take a look at um, adding different portlets and customizing this interface for your use. One thing that often developers or administrators want to do is be able to go in and see different charts. Rather than having to go and navigate to each chart independently every time you log in, once you get to a specific chart that you're interested in, you can then, as you'll notice here, save that chart to the dashboard and it'll show up as a quick, quick link on the dashboard, uh, making it much easier for you to find and locate the information that you're looking for.